In the early 2000s, the Game Boy Advance was the only real handheld on the market. Sorry, Engage, you were just too ridiculous for your time. Gaming on a phone? What kind of insanity is this? In a time where consoles were focused entirely on 3D gaming, the Game Boy Advance was sort of the last bastion for side-scrollers, top-down RPGs, arcade games, and Metroidvanias. But while the Advance was keeping 2D gaming alive, it did pose an interesting challenge for developers used to working primarily with the PlayStation 2, GameCube, and Xbox. How do you take something like Tony Hawk or Jet Set Radio and convert it to 2D? Well, you make it isometric and, in Tony Hawk's case, replace the music with generic fuzz. Similarly, how do you convert a 3D platformer like Spyro the Dragon or Banjo-Kazooie into a 2D format? Much like Tony Hawk, the solution for Spyro was to adopt an isometric perspective, but our game today would go straight up top-down. Banjo-Kazooie Grunty's Revenge is an attempt to replicate the entire gameplay style of the Nintendo 64 game to the Game Boy Advance, and it mostly succeeds, but you'll have to put up with some compromises along the way. The story here is largely inconsequential, and somewhat incoherent. While Banjo is preparing a barbecue, one of Gruntilda's henchmen wheels over a robot which her ghost then inhabits? Then she kidnaps Kazooie and travels to the past? to prevent them from ever meeting? But then you find Kazooie in the second level and rescue her. Look, it's not really important, but it's funny how little genuine motivation there really is here. They know you're not here for the story, and they're not gonna bother. Much like the 3D games, Grunty's Revenge has a hub world and levels unlocked by collecting jiggies, and of course, there are copious notes, jinjos, and mumbo tokens to collect as well. As you would expect, Banjo utilizes 8-way movement since there's no analog stick, and honestly, he controls surprisingly well. Maybe it's because with a modern controller you can utilize an analog stick, but I have no problems with maneuvering the guffawing goober and leaping around, although there were some depth issues caused by not having better edge definition for higher elevations. Before you get Kazooie, you're limited to just a few moves unlocked by talking to Bazai, Bottle's ancestor, like a pan smash and a vine climb. But eventually, as you recover Kazooie and keep finding Boz, you'll unlock the entire moveset of the original games, with a couple of small alterations. And all of this has translated well to 2D, even with the Game Boy Advance having fewer buttons. In fact, I actually like the egg shooting here more than I do in the original games, because it utilizes fixed angles and it's a lot easier to aim. While I would occasionally miss a couple of platforms because of the depth issues, for the most part they design around the perspective and keep the platforming fairly simple. This does mean that the game is quite a bit easier than the 3D games already were, but there was probably no other outcome here, as incorporating more challenging platform design would create a lot of frustration on a D-pad and an inability to rotate the playing field. But this is a game you'll probably sleepwalk through if you're just shooting for a regular completion, and unlike the original, there's no reward for reaching 100%. The game just awards you a star rating at the end, and 100% gives you 5 stars, and only if you complete the game within 3 hours. Oh yeah, did I mention this game was short? Because holy cow, I unlocked Gruntilda's Lair at 3 hours, and I was collecting just about everything. There are only 50 Jiggies in the game compared to the 100 of the original, and just 5 stages besides the finale, and none of them are as large or sprawling as Kazooie or Tui's. They do at least have multiple sections to them, but some of those sections are only a couple of screens long. As you've probably noticed, Rare dipped into their past inkwell a bit on the art direction, opting for the pre-rendered style of their SNES classics. And that is nostalgic in a way, but the style is maybe just a little too pixelated with the lower resolution of the Game Boy Advance. It also doesn't mesh as well with certain tile sets whenever you go into a side screen, as places like the Monster Manor will have very clean pixel art which contrasts heavily with the textured enemies. The music is not by Grant Kirkhope this time, but composer Jamie Hughes does an admirable job of replicating the feel of some of those original tracks, while adding new ones that fit well within that style and use of motifs. Since digitized audio was all the rage with the GBA, the classic banjo gibberish talking is all present and accounted for. 
Now, so far this all sounds pretty fine, and the game is perfectly pleasant, but like I said in the intro, there are some compromises and downsides to the game's modified design. There's no real backtracking to speak of, for example, as the moves you acquire only apply to current and future levels, and the mumbo-jumbo transformations are kinda weak, with very few applicable purposes. The mouse form can go through small holes, the candle form can set a couple of things on fire, and the octopus form can swim in hazardous water. These just aren't super exciting and end up being more of a headache when you find the rare opportunity to use them and then have to go all the way back to Mumbo's hut to transform. The Jiggies are purely a MacGuffin this time and there's no jigsaw element to them. You just go to a shrine and power up a device with them to remove force fields from the levels. There are no note doors because the hub world is entirely outside. And the minigames are... Ooh, they're bad. They're awful. In every level, you'll encounter at least a couple of minigames, from reeling in creatures with a fishing rod, to sliding down a slide and avoiding obstacles, to driving a water vehicle and shooting at others. And none of them feel good to play. The slide is so awkward to look at and play that it just doesn't feel like it's made by the same developer, which, by the way, is rare. The people who made Snake Rattle and Roll, Killer Instinct, Goldeneye, and Perfect Dark made this. And the worst thing about the minigames is that they repeat multiple times with very slightly different flavors. Oh, this time you're not sailing a boat and firing cannonballs, you're driving a jet ski and firing snowballs, even though they both handle exactly the same, which is terribly. I know you have to break up the action now and then, but I would much rather they brought over minigames from the originals, like the races, or had some mini bosses to fight or something different. Luckily, that's the only real major negative with the game. It's light and breezy and won't take you more than a couple of afternoons to finish, and if you're a completionist, you can check the collection totals at any time in the pause menu. It's fun to find all the notes in Jinjos, and it's not overwhelmed with collectibles like, say, Donkey Kong 64. Sure, it's a bit simpler and not as ambitious as its bigger brethren, but it's still plenty enjoyable and doesn't feel like a cash grab or cynical spin-off. And it's kind of impressive that they were able to get a game like this to work as well as it does on pretty underpowered hardware, and to control as well as it does on a limited button set. While I'd sooner play the originals or other 3D platformers in general, if I was a kid and this game was bought for me, I'd definitely not be disappointed. Sure, we have Banjo-Kazooie at home, but it's a fairly stable home on a good foundation, as long as you're fine with all the garbling. <laughs> Is there a 3D to 2D game you remember fondly? Or perhaps you'd like me to try it? Leave your recommendations in the comments below. I've also got a Patreon where I post my videos early, and a Discord where fans can hang out and talk about, I don't know, whatever. What do I look like, their dad? Next week I'll be posting my giant UFO 50 video, so look forward to that. But until then, you'll find me in another castle.